thankful to even be on this call right now, honestly. Wow. You you rolled your car? That's wild. Yeah. We, we hit some black ice, my girlfriend and I, and we're only going about 40, 45. And uh, we hit some black ice and just on a straight stretch of all things and just like flew us off the snow embankment and we rolled down the hill until we hit a tree. Wow, man. Um, yeah. Ask, if you want to see pictures, ask Barbara. I sent her some pictures of it. Oh wow, it was pretty gnarly. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> well, uh, other than that, no. <laughs> thank thank God everything's good. You're okay, brother. So, uh, wow. Um, looked like you had a guardian angel looking after you that day. No, it definitely did. Actually, I mean, like I said, if you want to see some pictures. Uh, asked Barbara for him. I sent her some on Messenger, and uh, just to kind of send it home, it was definitely crazy. Um, but uh, if you're asking for numbers, I got some written down here. Uh, as far as my circle prospecting is going, it's yep. going okay. Not, not the best, but definitely after we worked on some scripting uh, last week, right. it's been helping. I feel, gosh, I have it somewhere here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Uh, one second here. I gotta find it. I have like four notepads that I write stuff in. So, are you uploading them into the ISA call log? Uh, I just got it sent to me today, so I'm going to be doing that from now on. So, um, yeah, it looks like I got a hundred and twenty-seven calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's, you know, I'm still using a single dialer, so, um, I contacted 26, mm -hmm. and, uh, I turned four, I got four emails, uh, basically turned four of those into leads, yeah. and, uh, nine bad, nine bad numbers, and, uh, looks like, or sorry, uh, 20 bad numbers and um, 19 uh, no contacts. Okay. Out of the 26 contacts, how many was valid conversations? Are you? Is that what you're saying? You're yeah, I'm used, they're valid. They were valid conversations, but um, Correct. No, only no. four of those result. Yeah, only four of those resulted in me getting, uh, you know, actually turning them into a lead. Okay. All right, seven point something uh, valid conversations to a nurture. I will tell you the hardest thing to do with circle prospecting is building that database out. Uh, it's similar to when you start investing into like pay-per-click advertising with buyer leads. You really have to build a, a buyer base first, um, start to position yourself within that base, nurture it, um, start adding value over the long haul before they start percolating and coming back. Uh, so, you know, good job, good job with your nurtures. Where are you putting them into, like Market Snapshot or what? what Boomtown. You... Okay. I, I import them straight into Boomtown. That way, you know, that's the platform that we're using. So okay. I just, I'll have them like, I'll have Mojo, the Mojo dialer on one side of, you know, one screen. And then I have Boomtown open with uh, some other like script stuff. Um, kind of split screen and then I have the lead the add a lead pulled up as well just every call okay so then you're going in there and building criteria out for their neighborhood or because market snapshot yeah, um, is market snapshot would allow you to send them what homes are actually selling for versus what boomtown is mm -hmm. allowing you to do is just send them what homes are listing for right uh, is, yeah. Uh, as, yeah. Long, as long as that's okay and, and you're getting engagement back from them and going to end up converting mm -hmm. them long term, then, then that will work too. So. Yeah, is what, I'm, is what I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm, basically, I'm calling, asking for a listing, uh, you, know, you know, hoping that they're, you know, uh, listing. And then, you know, I go and if they tell me no, I'm just like, well, you know, my team's found that, you know, even if you're not looking to buy or sell, uh, most people like to stay up on a market. Uh, what's a good email address for you? And then they'll give it to me, or they don't. Okay. All right. Cool. So uh, I like that we made some tweaks to some of your word tracks with your intro. Uh, I thought it was a little too lengthy. 
Um, so we kind of cut mm-hmm. that down, getting right to, you know, capturing their attention within that seven to 10 second. Right. Uh, you're, uh, you're a high D personality. Um, so we had to work a mm-hmm. little bit on your tone and uh, you feel like you're making some um, decent improvements with the new intro. Yeah, I am. I, I and I've been working on my tonality a lot. A lot. Uh, my buddy calls it my grandma voice. Right. You know how you talk to your grandma. Hey, grandma. This is Casey. <laughs> you know, like. So I like grandma that. voice. I, I like that. <laughs> uh, no, it, um, it's. Uh, I told you to work kind of on an alter ego as well. Um, it's how you really yeah. get comfortable with that new tone. So it sounds like you've uh, you've done everything, it, and. Uh, Really, once we get through the holidays, you're really going to start to be able to pick up that volume. Uh, single line dialing, circle prospecting um, is tough. You need to be running a triple line dialer uh, for that stuff. All right, we're going to do that after the New Year's. So just after uh, New Year's, I'm going to be getting uh, – so after this week, basically, I'm going to be getting the triple dialer set up. I got all the permissions and everything set up, pre-set up, so I'm just going to uh, do it the first thing. All right. So, okay, cool. So tweaks helped, you know, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take the training wheels off the single line dialer, get bumped up to that, that triple line dialer. Uh, I like your valid conversation to nurture with circle prospecting seven point something is great, uh, for an email address. Um, and, and some markets, you know, people are finding success and really got this dialed in and they're around 30, 35 valid conversations on circle prospecting to, to a listing nurture. So yeah, that intro is okay. your numbers look better. I would just like to bump up that volume. Um, volume. And, uh, and, and then past that being able to make sure that we're accurate uh, with the criteria we're getting set up. If in Boomtown, I think is short, short term, I'd like to see them going into some type of, you know, uh, program that's tied in with uh, market snapshot. Uh, Boomtown does have some stuff. Coming, they're telling us uh, to be able to eliminate top producer, you know, uh, or there's an open API that hopefully they're going to uh, um, fuse a market snapshot into. But we'll see. So just keep right. what you're doing. Definitely something to- because it's all it's cool if we can get these email addresses and we can start building a database. That's phase one. Phase two mm-hmm. is being able to drip content on them, not just listings like market updates. Um, you know, any type of video market update, uh, uh, really. Right, we, stay as soon as they sign up for our uh, website, we start we start them on a drip campaign, oh. a long term drip. If they're just watching, oh. the very first thing they do is once they register, they get started on a long term drip. Right. And then, like depending on you know uh, the situation, you know that drip campaign can change. Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah I, I'm paying as close attention to those as I can. You know, I've been picking up a lot from Barbara and you and Mark and just like, because I'm the only ISA out of my agent, you know, out of my office or whatever, uh, um, for Jamie and Pat and them, uh, I'm really trying to gain as much knowledge in as many areas as I can, you know, circle yeah. prospecting. Great. <laughs> Expired physical is great. Like I, I'm just doing everything I can to soak up everything and, uh, utilize it every day. Cool, man. I love it. Uh, and uh, glad you could be with us today. Um, and uh, rolling your car over the holidays, nobody uh, wants to sign up for that. But thank God you're okay and your girlfriend or wife is yeah. okay and all that stuff. So, all right. Good yeah, stuff, good. Casey. I like uh, people that are coachable and willing to make tweaks to their game, implement it, um, test it. And definitely this test got us some better results. Um, and so I'm excited to get this triple line dialer, see if we can sustain those results um, and then add some more pillars and get better at database management. So uh, I like it. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Thanks. Right. Good stuff. Elise, what's up? Real quick, guys. Hopefully you got your numbers today. Uh, didn't want to get into it. Hi, Adam. How you doing? Doing <clears throat> outstanding. <laughs> That's good. So um, at my numbers, I have 195 dials, Mm -hmm. 61 connects, Mm -hmm. eight wrong numbers, Mm -hmm. and 53 valid contacts, conversations. Okay. How many appointments? Zero, unfortunately. 
So I did have one guy, um, we started using the consultation thing that you guys have been telling us about for buyers to see if they want to come in and meet with an agent um, and talk about what they're looking for and um, go over some details on that. And I had two people show interest in it. One wants me to follow up after the new year. Another said that he would come in on Tuesday, but he was a no-show. I followed up with him the morning of and right. texted him, but no response, no show. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and you're going back through old leads as well, right? Yeah. So I'm going as far back as almost about a year, I guess. Going back a year are good leads. You know, most people, uh, once they register, are usually about six to 18 months out. Um, and, and so you do need things to differentiate yourself. I talk about that all the time. And so creating like a home buyer advantage guide uh, with different uh, value adds in them, you know, one for us is the moving trucks. You know, the second is like our love it or leave it guarantee. If you absolutely don't love your house within 12 months of purchasing it from us, you know, we'll sell it for free on the listing side. Um, and mm -hmm. there's, there's tons of more value in there, right? But we only want to throw one out at a time um, to get them to take yeah. questions on their needs, wants, and desires. I really want to hone in. Uh, uh, I want to do some role play. Are you calling expired or just internet leads? Cause, I'm calling everything. Because <clears throat> right. we're going we're to knock out some of these expireds. I want to get to the internet stuff with you. You have a great voice. You have good tonality. You have good speed, good pitch. Um, I, I really think that once you get past your intro and you get into the body of the conversation, um, I, I'd want to hear if you still kind of have that confidence and can articulate yourself well to be able to explain the value. But um, this is not so much about selling as it is collecting information and active listening um, and getting them to talk about what they're trying to accomplish, what their goals are, and making sure you know we're taking those notes and then we're echoing back to them through matching and mirroring with optimized offers or closes um, to help them achieve this or avoid this or enhance that. Um, and so uh, being able to maybe sync you on some call nights or uh, – I suggested they record some of your calls uh, to all of you guys last week. This is really how I built a call center and was able to get better, was listening to recorded calls. Um, and I and then I could be like, wow, I should have done that there, or use that value proposition, or let them talk longer and not interrupt them. Um, or I should have asked mm -hmm. a different question in a little bit different way just to be able to get the answer that I was looking for. Um, because your contacts are up there. Uh, I just like to hear what that sounds like. So if, if you have a way to record some calls and get them over to us, I'd like to be able to review them. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I have been getting a lot of people who are interested. They're just, well, I'm doing a lot of old people. So some people have already bought. So some of these valid contacts are people saying, I appreciate the follow-up, but we already bought. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are saying that they're waiting till either after the new year or the spring yeah. or the summer. Yeah, yeah. So I'm talking to people. I'm getting some good conversation. I'm um, noting all their information and setting follow-ups for them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, this is this is definitely a follow up game. Um, you know, as I say, I'd, I'd love to have old leads to be able to call um, because you're going to be able to find nuggets in them. But also, if there hasn't been any relationships built or they don't know what differentiate you from the other emails they're getting from the your guys' competitor, then you're just a uh, 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 you know, a face or a name on a drip email without adding any value with that human connection. And so uh, I think you're doing everything right. I just want to kind of hear what these offers sound like, how we're articulating the benefits, how we're uh, working in that optimized close. And we're definitely going to get into that over the coming weeks. I know you're new in the program. So I like, I'd like to see maybe volume up a little more. Are you, are you hand dialing still? Um, we just started the dialer about a week ago, so half my day is converting leads to the dialer, half my day is dialing. I was out Monday for the holiday, and I was out Tuesday because I was sick, so they could be higher. But Cool. All right. Good stuff. We're just going to keep working through that. Give me some recordings. The, if you end up having to record them through, like, Mojo, you can – the Rainmaker can spend like 25 bucks a month, I think is what it is with Mojo to be able to record calls, uh, isolate files, and you can be able to send me, hey, this is a good conversation here, or I felt like I should have converted this one, or what do you think, and just send me uh, send me over some links. Um, okay. And uh, let me review them, because um, 
from a surface level stuff as an ISA in terms of your intro offer, you know, benefit, understanding that value. I think you're there. You sound good. Want to bump up that volume uh, and make sure that you're high. You're a high eye personality. So what we have to govern with our eyes that we bring in our call center is our top time. Um, they end up talking too much or talk their way out of appointments or not really um, answer and ask, acknowledging and asking. Uh, to be able to get the information that they need, or if you are extracting that information and getting it, some eyes are uncomfortable with asking for the appointment and making it optimal to to, to them. So um, we'll definitely work through that. All right. Okay. Yep. Good stuff, Jennifer. What's going on in the world today? Jennifer sleeping on her keyboard over there. I'm here. I'm here. I don't know why it's not letting me do it through my um through my headphones. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, you don't have a lot. I was like, you don't have a lot. No, I had like ten things connected, so I can try to keep you in my headphones and try to talk through my um through my um. Uh, your piece, and for some reason it didn't work. So everyone's oh. just gonna have to hear what I'm saying in uh, the office. <laughs> cool. So how'd your last week go? How'd your last week go? Um, it's uh, it's been okay. Um, we've had some changes. We um we ended up um moving um brokerages, so it's been a lot of change. Um, we just literally moved into a new office, and we're um training on um on all uh, Keller Williams stuff now. So um. In between all of that, I've been uh, I've I've been calling as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have uh, two thirty nine dials uh, from yesterday, thirty seven contacts, twenty seven wrong numbers, and ten valid conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't um, I didn't get any appointments, but I have some real good follow ups. Mm -hmm. um, and one potential person that that. Um, that could be really good as a buyer and a seller. Okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah, being you know being able to move during the holidays and uh, let me meet you for getting some feedback. So being able to move during the holidays and definitely have that radical focus um, is tough. And so uh, I think you're just trying to power through ten valid conversations. You know, even if you're hitting on the range I'd like to see you guys within, within that 12 to 15 valid conversation to appointment ratio, you know, yeah, I'd like to, like to see us get uh, one appointment, but we're moving the holidays, you're brand new in the program, we'll, we'll definitely work through some of this stuff. So um, let's get settled in over the next week and look forward to uh, getting you ramped up. So here, you can unmute yourself, Jennifer. Sorry, I muted you. Moving is no fun and trying to keep business alive. Moved uh, offices and locations a couple different times. Wasn't fun with the call center and keeping production high. So get where you're at. We'll sink. Go ahead, Jennifer. Go ahead, Jennifer. Oh yeah, no, and I um and I and I technically don't have a phone line either, so I'm like calling on my cell phone, <laughs> like hand dialing from where whatever phone I can find. Um, yeah, you're boot. You're just boot, you're bootstrapping the operations right now and until you get settled in, <laughs> get everything set up and going. So I'm not gonna pick on you too much. All right, Jennifer. Cool, Melanie. What's up? What's going on in the world? Hey, Adam. Did you have a good Christmas? Yes, ma'am. Um, we had. I was right up the notes here. 364 dials, mm -hmm. 39 connects, mm -hmm. 14 valid conversations, and um, three buyer appointments. Mm -hmm. One of them is already confirmed. One is this afternoon, mm -hmm. and another one on Monday. Mm -hmm. And two pre-approval attempts. Okay. 
that's solid with the holidays um, and everything uh, going on for you guys. Your volume was cut in half, which cut your results in half. But from a skill set, set, set standpoint, you've been hovering uh, around that five value conversations to appointment ratio with uh, over a 70 percent show up confirm ratio. So your, your consistency with your numbers is good. So right there, right there where they need to be. Love yep. it. We've been pretty busy past couple days. We're all getting back to the grind. Yep. I love it. Good stuff. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep moving. Trying to get through this, guys, so we can get to this expired stuff. Scott, what's up with you, brother? Scott could have stepped away. Shay is uh, one of the coaches and team leads on our team. She just uh, – Hopped on. What's up, Shay? Hey, just thought I would, you know, check in and or and listen to what you guys are doing. And see what nuggets I can get from it, and anything I can share as well. Cool. Um, no, you work directly for me. You <laughs> you get to see this mode all the time, right? So good stuff. Yeah, I'm always picking up something. So you never get yourself too comfortable. Yep. Yep. So Shay runs a team on our team. She's got, like, how many people you have on your team? Seven or eight? Seven. Seven? Yes. Um, also working Shay into doing some physical training with our group as we're expanding into other markets. Um, and uh, also running a coaching company. There's only one of uh, myself. And so uh, Shay is really up and coming with uh, coaching, even with our Select Homes peers um and looking for her to do a lot of contracts training for us operations training our operations we might be a small elite group of people that do a lot of business but what allows us to do a lot of business besides having great people is great systems and so um, making sure you know they're following our systems and uh, filling out complete paperwork and, and staying legit with all that so looking forward to uh, working more with her in 2017 with that stuff so what uh, what we do on the foundations call, Shay, <clears throat> is uh, um, a lot of these people are brand new. They're within 90 days of our program and uh, really helping them create the habits of tracking their calls, uh, call volume with different with different pillars, how to use the ISA call log, the master tracker, uh, really hone in and aim in on what a valid conversation to appointment ratio is what their show up confirm ratio is, and then how to improve that through the basics of intros, offers, benefit value, and getting people to take chat action and getting their attention, holding interest, invoking desire, and getting them to take action. So the mechanical um, parts as well as the psychological parts um, with the basic word tracks and outlines, and then they spin off to the advanced group with Mark and uh, the advanced selling group. So good stuff. Awesome. Steve, what's up, brother? Hey, Adam, what's going on? Man, just uh, excited to be on this call and uh, looking forward to exploding into 2017. Yeah, I, I can definitely, I can definitely talk to that. I'm, I'm looking forward to next year myself. So, what happened over there uh, in uh, Jersey Land? Um, not a. a Two days worth of calls. Uh, I was about 250 altogether. Mm -hmm. Had 31 connections. About 11 good phone calls out of there. Mm -hmm. 18 of those were wrong numbers, and I had one appointment set. Mm -hmm. So 11 valid conversations off of 31 contacts. 11 valid conversations. Correct names and numbers is valid conversation, regardless if we got to the, through the intro or not. Um, so 11 to one. So good job with that. Look forward to just getting back on track after these holidays, getting that volume uh, back up. Obviously, only two days of calling. I'm sure you will. So um, as a rainmaker, I take 11 to 1 as long as the quality is good and it confirms out. I'll just try to figure out how to do that and duplicate it as many times over again. So, Right. As of, uh, as of Tuesday the 3rd, I'm going full time. So I'm hoping these numbers jump off quite a bit compared to now. Uh, no, they will. You're very involved in our coaching company. You're coachable. Um, you're making improvements. You just was toying with the part-time. You see the opportunity. 
Um, and uh, I've definitely seen you make some improvements. And so, you know, we get that volume up, you know, three or four listing appointments, five listing appointments, people will take that all day long. So that, uh, that'd be the goal to get it with circle and then duplicate yourself, train, train to replace yourself, move on to another pillar um, and uh, scale that with a good ROI and just keep adding different pillars. That's exactly what the plan is. All right, all right. So Casey said, what is that, Scott? So uh, Open API is basically um, what allows other technology platforms to communicate with one another uh, in terms of data. And so Boomtown, what he was talking about when I was talking about Market Snapshot, it's the same way Boomtown has an open API with Mojo now um, and other uh, providers that they're going to be adding in 2017. They want to be all uh, one solution platform. You know, we run Skyslopers, our broker management back end, and they're going to be adding a broker management open API into Boomtown. So it's all into one platform instead of working out of different technologies and different logins and stuff like that. Uh, they're looking at Skyslope and a couple of other uh, uh, programs. So for us, it would be beneficial if it is uh, Skyslope because we already use them. Um, just allows the technology to work seamless and be integrated together and share information. Um, so that's what that is. <clears throat> All right, guys. So <clears throat> I don't know. We had 15 plus people on last week. We really hammered through the numbers. Uh, we had four people on um, when we got started. And so I said, let's get through some of the numbers. What's up, Brandon? Welcome to the call. See you hopped on here. Uh, we're going to skip over. We'll skip over your numbers, catch up with you next week with that stuff. What I really want to focus on today, guys, is expireds. Um, I, I had mentioned last week that the first is going to be on Sunday. Okay. That's when a flood of expired listings are going to come on the market. Uh, most, uh, most agents, listing agents sign six month contracts. And so, yeah, we get the first of every month and every day we get a handful of new expires that we're calling in our call center and for our expansion teams into their markets and setting a listing appointment, listing appointments off of those. Um, the first of every month, we get a few more than any other typical day, uh, of the month. However, the first of the year, um, and some markets you could get hundreds uh, of leads and expires right off the bat. <clears throat> so I don't know how aggressive your rainmakers want to be or how much uh, money you want to make, but if you have the opportunity to make dials on Sundays on, for the people that are calling expires, you you are going to beat the competition to those new expired listings that are looking to possibly interview new agents. Um, you know, actually get their home sold so they can move on with their life um, and uh, all of that stuff. Majority of the agents are going to be hungover and not working on Sunday. Guaranteed. I guarantee then there's going to be another small amount that is not going to be working on Monday. Um, and so your best shot in terms of probably setting a ton of expired appointments is going to be on Sunday. However, if you end up working on Monday, I would try to get on the phone about seven o'clock on Monday, seven o'clock in the morning to try to beat everybody else that is going to start calling them at eight o'clock, eight thirty on Monday morning. OK, and so that's why I really wanted to hammer away at the expired outline, do some role playing, answer some questions and make, and make sure we're good. Steve and I did a little bit of role playing last week, uh, but um, I really want to make make sure that uh, we know the pain isolation questions, how to throw them in a blender, you know, mix it all up to be able to get the information that we're looking for um, to be able to pick up some listing appointments. Let me pull back up this live chat. Who's who wants to uh, who, who wants to hop on here and do some role playing with me? Steve, who, who's calling expired? Elise, you want to do some role playing? Who's going to? Who's going to step up? All right. I guess I will since no one else will. Is this Elise? Yeah, it is. Yeah, she just called all of you guys out since nobody else. <laughs> I will feel obligated. It's not like you guys are paying a large fee to be here or anything, right? <laughs> oh, whatever. Um, 
I don't do a lot of expireds, but they are on my list. So, so if you're in a hyper seller seller's market, um, a majority of the homes are selling. Like we're in a we're in a seller's market, so we only get a couple a day. Versus three or four years ago, we used to get like ten to twenty expireds a day, and then like the first of the year would have been a couple hundred, right? Um, we've shifted from a buyer's market into a seller's market. So 73, I'd have to look at our market, uh, information we get from our, our reports through MLS, but, uh, I think 70 some percent of the houses that actually list are selling. And in some price ranges, we have barely a month's supply of inventory, which means if another home doesn't come on the market within a month, month and a half, every single home would sell. So, um, but some of you guys, um, you know, might be in a buyer's market, definitely getting a lot more uh, expired leads than than other places. So I'm a, I'm gonna work through the structure of this. I'm gonna call you Elise, and we're we're okay. going to role play through this, um, and then I'll kind of reverse it, let you do some role playing with me, and vice versa, right? Okay. Ring ring. Hello. Elise. Yes. Hey, this is Adam Bailey giving you a call from over here at Select Homes. Uh, I'm inquiring, are you still accepting offers on your home? Uh, I, we noticed it had expired. Um, I'm, I don't have a new agent yet, so no. You don't have a new agent? Okay. Well, how long was it on the market for? About three months. Mm -hmm. Three months. Awesome. Now, off of uh, your home being listed for that three months, how much traffic did you experience? Foot traffic, how many people came through the house? Uh, maybe about 10 to 20. Wow, 10 to 20. It's good, uh, some good foot traffic. Now, uh, what, uh, what was the feedback off of that traffic? Uh, we didn't get a lot of feedback, but what we did hear was that it was outdated. Outdated. Is that directly from the the consumer's mouth, the traffic, or did your uh, listing agent tell you that? Um, the traffic, the the buyers that came through. Okay. All right. So, why you know, why do you think the home didn't sell? I mean, what do you think could have been done differently to get your home sold over those ninety days? You know, I really just think that it's the market right now. Um, it's just not moving. So I think maybe if we just wait long enough, um, maybe in the spring it'll sell. Right. No, I can understand that and appreciate that. So, uh, you know, who told you that it was the market? Was that the actual agent or are you just assuming assuming that? That's just what I'm hearing from um, people I know and friends and things like that. Other people have tried to sell. But the right. market's just not good right now. Right. Um, yeah, you know. 20 people, uh, you know, coming to see your house within 90 days. Uh, that's a fair amount of traffic. So, you know, I'm sitting here looking at your home on MLS right now. It, it looks like a beautiful home shows well, um, does need some updating. Uh, did the agent actually sit down with you, uh, and make some suggestions on repairs or some cosmetic touching up to be able to get the maximum am amount for your home? Did they counsel you at all in that? Um, they made a couple suggestions, but I don't want to put any more money into this house. I just want to sell it and be done with it. Okay. No, I can appreciate that. So sounds like you don't want to be hassled. Obviously, you put it on the home because you uh, on the market because you wanted to get it sold. Like, what are you doing after you sell the home? What are you trying to accomplish? You moving out of the area, upsizing, downsizing? What's going on? Yep, I'm going to Arizona to be with family. Awesome. So, what happens if you don't get this home sold? Um, I guess I'll just wait and see how long it takes me to get it sold. Okay. You didn't have a job up there at no. the timetable that you're trying to meet? No, I'm retired. So as, as whenever I can get it sold, it's fine. Okay. No, I can understand that. Um, I, I will tell you, we turned down more listings than we're willing to pick up. Um, and, uh, the research that we've done on this home, we just can't understand why it, you know, hasn't sold. Uh, I appreciate you being on the phone with me for these few minutes. 
you know, one of the things that we do is really help people explode and expand their home's traffic and exposure to pre-qualified buyers. Uh, anyways, let, let me ask you one last question, Elise. If, if we could show you how to get your home sold the fastest for top dollar so you can, uh, you know, move move to Arizona and be with family with our worry-free, no obligation, uh, aggressive marketing plan that's going to work um, for you without a doubt. Would that be worth a few minutes of your time to see how that could work for you? Um, possibly, but I really just am set on just waiting till the spring at this point. So I probably won't be talking to any agents until then. Okay. So, I mean, if, but if I had a qualified buyer to get your home sold today, you would sell your home is what you're telling me. Uh, yeah, possibly. Okay. Cause basically what we would, what we would like to do is come out, sit down with you and, and be honest with you about why we think the home uh, uh, didn't sell. We're actually in a seller's market. It's a great market. Um, we we want to go over our 89 point marketing plan. You know, we have 89 different uh, ways to be able to position your home and proactively get it sold now versus what the traditional agent has, which is a three point marketing plan. They come out, you know, you guys agree upon price. They upload it into MLS. And then they go out and put the nice, big, fancy sign in the yard and go back to their office and, and, and kick their feet up and, and uh, wait for the calls to come in. That's a reactive agent. And that's probably why you're tying it to the market as well. Um, but to, I apologize on behalf of the industry. Um, when, when would be a good time where we could come out and go over all of that with you? No obligation. If you end up wanting to list in the spring after you see our aggressive marketing plan that's going to work for you without a doubt, great. If not, then we can move forward. Would uh, you have some time tomorrow at four? Um, yeah, tomorrow would work. Yeah. All right. So, guys, so I'm going to stop right here. Sometimes we could jump through some of this stuff and uh, use any one of these value propositions, all right? So if commission was an issue to her and fees – and she had a lazy agent before communication was an issue where um, they wasn't pumping enough into marketing. We have a flexible commission structure and we flex up with that. And I could have used that one. Like we offer the same flat rate, six apples, right? And then we had so much value that we have a platinum plan, which is 7%. And we end up beating out a lot of competition uh, uh, that have the 6% um, <clears throat> And we get them under 7%, which commission was an issue. But value unarticulated is value unappreciated. And I, and I promise you value will never – or cost will never, ever be an issue in the presence of value. You just got to be able to deliver on it. Um, if she wanted to challenge me on the marketing, I would have used the maximum marketing performance guarantee, which states we're so confident in our marketing. If you can find another team or another uh, agent that's willing to put more of their own money into marketing your home and getting it sold – over and above what we're willing to do, we'll sell your home for free, right? So the fair market evaluation, she's already somewhat, you know, had that. Um, so I'm not going to pitch that too much or market ma uh, maximum market analysis, whatever you guys want to call it. She was moving out of the area. So the love it or leave it guarantee wouldn't have played any role with her. But if she was getting this home sold to be able to purchase another home, um, I, I would have used the guarantee um, to get my foot in the door, just to have opportunity to uh, secure uh, the listing, right? So right here, we're going to get to the qualification part to this, all right? So you guys can see that I have a listing questionnaire over here. Hopefully, you guys have access to our listing questionnaire. This is what our inbound and our outbound ISAs fill out. Even though you guys have some of this content or content, some of this data in, in your MLS, still go through and ask them specific questions because you're looking for red flags. Like what is, what do you think your home is worth? What is your current payoff? Is there a shed? Is there a hot tub? Is there a deck? You want to be able to get as much information over and above even what you see on MLS. So uh, you can start, you can basically start doing fair market analysis or your agents can before they even step in the house. There's a lot of agents that have a two-step uh, listing appointment, which they go out, preview the property, look at it, have initial discussions, 
and then they go back to the office, pull comps, comparables, and then they go back out to the house and show them what their research was off of in comparison to their location, um, their condition, their, their old price of their home. And if you have all of this information going in beforehand, you, uh, it will allow the listing agents to have a one-step process if they're willing to uh, do the comparables on site with the individual to be able to get paperwork signed that same day. All right. So great. Grab a pen and a piece of paper. I like to give you some information, yada, yada, yada. And I have this built in right here is if somebody gives me reluctance and I need buffering talking points with these right here. So I'm not, I'm not even going to read that hundred percent. I'm going to, I'm going to use that as a talking point to tie back in to value propositions. So now that I went through the listing questionnaire, we agreed on four o'clock. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to qualify you. All right. This is the way you also set quality listing appointments is filling out a full listing questionnaire. It will take about 15 minutes, 10 minutes to uh, get this stuff filled out. Um, you know, one last thing, I appreciate you giving me this information, spending a little bit of time on the phone with me. Um, you know, we're pretty serious about what we do, at least we work with people who are serious and committing to selling their home and, and moving on to the next goal in their life. And for you, it's, you know, getting to Arizona, getting back to family. Um, and we really want to help you get that done as quick as possible. So by me being on the phone with you just for these few minutes, I am under the assumption you are committed to those things. Would that be a fair assumption on my part? Yeah. Great. I just wanted to confirm that uh, we're not wasting your valuable time or at ours at, at this point in building our relationship. Um, you know, and when we do come out tomorrow at four o'clock and you believe in our power uh, team marketing concept, you're comfortable with the listing agent. You guys can agree upon the new market value or the value of your home and we exceed your expectations. Is there any other reason why you wouldn't list with us at that particular time? Um, I, I guess so. Okay. So I just eliminated, uh -huh. I, 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 so with, so with that, you just eliminated all of the reasons. Well, if you got good marketing, well, if I'm comfortable with the listing agent, cause people only do business with people that they like. Right. Um, or if you can exceed expectations and agree upon a price, like those things are what the listing agents are going to have to handle and overcome to be able to get the listing appointment. But, but I mean, get the listing, but what you're looking for is, oh, well, my husband has to be here and to make that decision, he's not going to be here tomorrow at four. Or I'm really going to wait for, to, for the spring 100% no matter what you tell me, right? And if, <laughs> if there needs to be another person involved, we need to make sure we set that time to have both decision makers there. Um, or we need to add notes into the, the account stating they said that they wasn't going to listen until spring. I pitched them on our marketing, our 89 point marketing plan. I differentiated myself from the average frustrated agent that has a three point marketing plan. That's what they bid on because the value propositions that you get them to take actions on their needs, wants, and desires needs to be congruent with the listing agent. So adding notes for the listing agent is so important because if they know the 89 point marketing plan differentiating through the three point marketing plan got them to take action, then that's what the listing agent needs to know. Just like you guys have to understand that how the psychology of the lead was generated and through what source, because there's different messages that have to be delivered to an expired as an example, than to an internet lead, right? Or I mean to an, uh, yeah, to an internet lead or even an internet lead generated through a seller home evaluation site versus a regular opt-in buyer lead. And so depending on which uh, of these that you guys have in, in your toolbox and which one that you use, highlight that to your buyer agent so they can go in with, hey, I know that commission and flexible commission structure and choices are a big thing to them, right? And the listing agent will know how you pitch it because with us, you know, we're going to say, hey, we got a flexible commission structure. It sounds like you're a person that likes choices. Would you agree with that? The good news is, is we have uh, an a la carte of flexible commission you can choose from. When's normally a good time we could come out, go over all of that with you, no obligation, right? If commission was your issue or objection, right? And then they're going to tell you or ask you. What is the what is the, the what is the structure? What's the flex plan? Can you just tell me the percentages? And as an ISA, 
you have to position yourself and say, hey, that's a great question. I am licensed or whatever, not licensed. I don't work in that capacity. They're going to, the expert listing agent is going to be able to go over all of that with you. Now, here's the cool part. Here's what I can tell you. And please don't tell Greg I told you this because that's who you're going to be meeting with. Now, if we get your home listed and we're marketing it and you find the buyer, we'll actually sell your home for 1% to still represent your best interest, get it into escrow, make sure it get closes and gets out of escrow and you're legally protected and somebody's looking after your fiduciary responsibility. Now that's definitely cool, right? That's definitely fair enough, right? Does that make sense, right? Okay, and then you got them to say yes and you're like, great, Greg's gonna be able to go over the other flex plans with you, okay? And at that time, you've, you've still positioned yourself and gave them the the cool one percent part but you're not going to tell them that they're we're flexing up with our commission because we're adding so much value right and then and then when the agent gets there he's going to build so much value and have different options um that uh, they're going to appreciate it and then they can pick what best works for them their goals their family all that stuff all right <clears throat> so real quick for another one a cancel anytime agreement so let's say you were in a contract or an agreement with a listing agent for a year and that agent wasn't calling you back do you don't think that was marketing the home they maybe they was holding your feet to a fire with you paying a transaction cancellation fee because those are out there uh whatever right like people over promise under deliver we want to over promise and then over deliver with stuff but it I love our cancel anytime agreement from a call center standpoint is because if they've been locked up in that and they want to wait till spring, they're tired of vacuuming their floor, keeping their bed made. They're sick of arguing with the agent, ch trying to chase down feedback, uh, attempting to um, get them to even answer the phone. What you have to do is not sympathize with them, but we have to empathize with them and be like, oh, I apologize on behalf of the industry. We really pride ourselves on communication. Oh no, How, you know, give me some more examples. Tell me a little bit more about that. Get them worked up, get them pissed off, get them venting, let them talk, empathize with them and then solve their problem with, Hey, look, I understand you don't want to deal with agents. I understand you're pissed off. I would be pissed off too. And right now I'm a little upset too, but we promise that we're going to deliver the net result, which is to get your home sold the fastest for the most amount of money. And if we don't deliver on our 89 point marketing plan, love it or leave it guarantee, maximum market performance guarantee, or our agent drops the ball and is not executing on the brand promise that they're going to go over with you, you can fire us at any time. That's how confident we are in the service and the value that we deliver to our clients. We'll shake hands. We'll walk away. No strings attached. Now, that's definitely fair enough to sit down with us. No obligation to be able to go over all of this so we can show you how to get your retired butt moved to Arizona back with the family, right? You always want to tie it back to what they're trying to accomplish or what's going on in their world today, right? And so hopefully um, hopefully that gave you some examples in. Alicia was actually pretty, uh, pretty, pretty easy or pretty nice. Uh, let's say I'm getting some reluctance at the top of the script up here because um, people – some people are going to be like, just get to the point. You let me go through each one of these. Sometimes I can only get one or two of these off, and then I have to really figure out what their goals are or what they're trying to accomplish, right? And then I want to I want to let them know that we turned down more listings than we're willing to pick up because the reason I can say that without lying is because we have filters built in um, to our feeds, IDX feeds from the data that we get that push in, pushes into the call center. So our average sales price – and Wichita is, you know, 125, 130 as a company. We're like at 140, right? So we don't call anything in our market that's below that. And we have some other criteria and filters set up. So that data doesn't even push into our call center, okay? So we eliminate the stuff that we don't want, and then we target the ones that we do want. And it's a smaller number than the ones that we flush out. It's also certain areas of town. Uh, price ranges or some other requirements uh, criteria as well. And so I can let them know, hey, we turn down more listings than we're willing to take. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at your home on MLS right now. 
it's a beautiful home. Looks like it shows well. Yeah, it does need a little bit of updating, but uh, what home built in 1985 doesn't, right? Um, and then I tie it back to did they counsel you on repairs and cosmetic stuff to be able to get maximum uh, money um, for, for your current condition? And you told me you wasn't going to put any more money into it. And so I acknowledged it. And I said, I understand that, right? And then I tied it back to another USP with what your goal was and what you was trying to accomplish to get you to take action. Okay. Like this, this outline looks so simple, guys, but there's so much psychology built into it. And you can really mix and match stuff for what the client is telling you through active listening. You're not going to just puke all these on them or just go down straight down the list. And the same with these right here. You, this is the psychological order that would be an easy prospect that you'd want to go through. But sometimes they're not going to tell you how long it was on the market. You can see how long it was on the market. You're the fifth person that called today. What the hell do you guys want? Who cares how much traffic I didn't get through my house or foot traffic or how many people looked at it? The agent wasn't giving me feedback, communicating with me. The home didn't sell anyways. What do you want? You know? And then so I'm going to immediately know that they're not going to answer any more of these. And so I have to jump down to, well, real quick, what are you trying to accomplish by getting your home sold? You put it on the market for a reason and you guys are going to learn how to start using negative reverses. And with those type of individuals, you have to use a negative reverse or a two just to be able to get their attention to hold interest to possibly get down in here to differentiate yourself from Maybe their home was overpriced because their agent overpriced it or they let them price the home. Maybe the condition of the home. Maybe it's the location. There's train tracks that run through the backyard. There's three reasons why homes don't sell and they become expired, withdrawn, disgruntled, pissed off, whatever it may be. It's because of price, overpriced, condition of the home for the price or location and, and, and it's not in alignment with the price, all right? And they're always gonna blame that on marketing. They're always gonna blame it on the agent. And I never want to throw an agent under the bus. And I never wanna start talking about an agent, but I ask the right questions to be able to get them to start venting. And this question right here is huge because, you know, why do you think the home didn't sell? I mean, what do you think could have been done differently? And they're gonna tell you, well, all real estate agents are the same. I don't know if anything could have been done differently. And, and, and some people will tell you that, or I don't, I don't know. I'm the expert. Why don't you tell me what could have been done differently? Right. Or they're going to say, I don't think they just marketed the home correctly. They, they didn't do an open house, didn't do enough open houses. Maybe they didn't, you know, they're going to, you're going to get a, a, a probably about 20 different responses from that question. But I want to, I want to identify pain points and then I want them to start talking about them pain points. I want them to start reliving those pain points. And then I want to be able to apologize on behalf of the industry because of that agent. And then I'm going to resolve their issue. Real quick before we do another role play, the best way that I want that, that I can tee up that the, the reason I do that, it's kind of like those commercials, right? Um, like health commercials. Like um, they, I don't know. I don't even know, like off the top of my head, a good one, right? Like it's, it's like all of this pain and all this stuff's wrong with you and, and all these conditions and, and all this stuff, right? And it's like raining and dark. And then all of a sudden you take this pill once a day or once a week and then all the sun comes out, right? And it's happy and there's positive music and they're skipping along smiling, right? And, and if you actually study commercials, that's what they do first is – they, they get you thinking about all of the negative. They get you thinking about the pain or they try to box you into a corner to get you to operate out of a place of fear. And then they come in and promise the world if you order now or, or take this pill, right? And, and then your whole world is going to change and, and, and be this whole positive movement that they close with, except with some of them now at the end, it's like, yeah, but you're going to have bleeding in the mouth or diarrhea or start peeing on yourself or something, right? Like there's always side effects, right? But just think of building up a bunch of pain because they're expired. They're pissed off. Their home didn't sell. And you want to, you want them to come up with a conclusion of why it didn't sell, talk about it, blame it. And then once you figure out what it is, 
then you can fix that problem, right? At the net, at the end of the day, they only want to sell their home, but there's usually trust loss. There's not enough value. And so they have a belief system, right? Like agents are lazy or it's just the market or they didn't do enough or the communication sucks or they're all just viewed as slimy salespeople, right? And so it's up to us as professionals, not just to identify problems, but to get them to talk about it empathize with them and then resolve it through mixing and matching an arsenal of value propositions, whether it's, you know, sometimes, sometimes I don't even have to use any of these value propositions and I can get right to this. You'll be meeting one of our top marketing specialists who've truly mastered the art and science of marketing and who have sold hundreds of thousands of homes using select homes, power team concept. You know, obviously I know without a fact uh, they're going to be uh, uh, using some tools and techniques that seem to be working pretty well. They're going to be sharing with you some of our strategies and methods that we use to make all this happen. It's going to be in a powerful meeting. You know, mo uh, you know, most people that they're meeting with, they're picking up ideas and techniques on how to get their home sold in today's market. OK, and then I can go right to picking a time, the listing questionnaire and closing. But there's sometimes like with you, at least I just had to use 89 point marketing plan. You let me get my information I needed, offered some solutions. And there's other times where I have to use three or four of these and I still don't get a listing appointment. I still don't get the appointment. I know they're paying. I offer solutions. I'm, I've differentiated our broker from not being a commodity, but a value based brokerage because anybody can put a home in NL MLS. And that's why you have to debunk that all agents and all brokerages are exactly the same. That's a myth. And you have to tell them it's a myth. Let me tell you what we can do differently. All right. Here's how I'm really going to be able to help you. And if you don't have perceived value or tangible value through the home buyer advantage program, you know, some of these things in our listing stuff, you're just you're just a commodity to them. Right. And so we really have to be able to build up that value and it has to be optimized, guys, to their pain. And that's why I said use these wisely through active listening. All right. I'm going to open this up, take some questions. I went on a good 30-minute rant right there. We got through it once. Um, the only thing that we didn't get to is using tie-downs, all right? So grab a pen and a piece of paper. These tie-downs have made me a lot of money over the last uh, 10 years, and I'm going to give you guys my optimized close. And once I start getting, once I start getting tie-downs to get them to say yes, then I can go in for the optimized close. The optimized close is up here, but it's very generic. All right. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we do is help people really explode and expand their home's traffic and exposure to pre-qualified buyers. Let me ask you a question. If I can honestly show you how to sell your home fast for top dollar with our worry-free, no obligation, aggressive marketing plan that works without fail, would that be worth a few minutes of your time? See how that could work for you. That's a generic close right there. But I can take that same close and optimize it to them once I have enough information. You know, one of the things that we do is work with people that are retired and relocating out of the area all the time to really boost their home's traffic and exposure to pre-qualified buyers. Anyways, Elise, I appreciate you giving me this information. If I could show you how to get your home sold faster and for top dollar so you could relocate to Arizona, get it done swiftly, and start to enjoy that time with your family with our worry-free, no obligation, aggressive marketing plan, would that be worth a few minutes of your time to see how this could work for you and your family? Okay, so you see how you can use the generic one, but that that paragraph, I, I'm going to show you guys over our time spent together, how this has helped me generate millions and millions and millions of, of revenue uh, since I was 22, 23 years old. Um, and, and the more personable you can make it with this formula, the better you're going to get them to say yes. But also... You might have to close a couple times. That might just get you to get a little deeper into a conversation with that basic one. And then once you start having some value adds, and then if you can start using some tie downs with, I gave you a couple of earlier, does that make sense? Would you like to see how this could work for you and your family? Is that fair enough? Can you, don't you agree with that? Okay, those four right there 
could save an ISA or an agent tons of money because what I talked about a lease or was it a lease or yeah, with a high I personality, we tend to, we tend to want to keep talking because there's dead silence or we've just added all this value. And then it's like, Oh shit, what do I say next? What are they thinking? Are they judging me? Do they like it? And so after you make your point and after you have a value add, you have to have a tie down. Does that make sense? And then pause. Is that fair enough? Would you like to see how this could work for you or your family or whatever, you and your wife? Okay. Good stuff, guys. So the tie downs will help help you start to get them to say yes. And you'll know if they're tracking with you and you're in the right right direction, then you'll start getting them to shake their head, saying yes, getting out of that no, 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 arms crossed state and into a more open state. Like another one is, wouldn't you agree with that? Does that make sense? Would you like to see how this could work for you and your family? All right. And then once I get them to start saying yes, regardless if they've even committed to an appointment or not, you can still use this paragraph here. Great. Grab a pen and a piece of paper. I'd like to give you some more information because if they liked what they heard up here and you haven't been able to close for an appointment yet, and they're still like, no, but you're getting them to agree with your tie downs. They're staying on the phone with you. You understand what they're trying to accomplish. And until you can master how to optimize this closing formula up here that I'm going to give you for buyers, sellers, you, you can use it to really get anything you want in your life as long as you have active listening skills. And until you learn how to re-optimize and build that paragraph back down here again, you can say, great. A pattern interrupt is what you're going to also learn as you guys advance through. The reason I asked them to grab a pen and a piece of paper is because it's a pattern interrupt. Some people are going to tell you they're grabbing a pen and a piece of paper, and they're not even really grabbing a pen and a piece of paper. Because I used to, I used to act, ask them to echo my phone number back to me, and I could tell me, tell me who was really present in the moment and writing it down. And who wasn't? And then that's who I knew I'd be able to close as well with this paragraph. Great. Grab a pen and a piece of paper. I'd like to give you some information. First, write down my name again. You probably already forgot. Uh, it's Adam Bailey. Second, you always can reach me here at 409-3916. Now, can you repeat that back to me real quick? Make sure you got that. You're going to have people hang up. They're going to echo it back to you. Or they're going to ask you, ask you to just text the information to them. Okay. And you're going to be like, look, you look, okay, we've been on the phone for a little bit. You know, basically, you're going to be meeting one of our top listing marketing specialists who have truly mastered the art and science of marketing to be able to get your home sold, who have sold hundreds of thousands of homes using our power team concept. Yes, at least they're using some tools and techniques that seem to be working pretty well. They're going to be sharing with you some powerful strategies and methods that we use to make all this happen. I know for a fact it's going to be an extremely powerful meeting, all right? Now, most people are meeting with us to pick up ideas and techniques on how to get their homes sold in today's market. No obligation. When's a good time we could get together? Tomorrow at 4, and I'm going to try to tie down for that appointment again. All right? Any questions, guys? And then we go back into qualifying. So you can flip this paragraph right here. Whoops. Let me open this up. You can flip. I don't know why it's not. It's not letting me highlight this paragraph. You, you can flip this paragraph right here with this stuff right here. Or you can use a couple of these and then insert this paragraph. All right. But I prefer that you use one at a time and then use tie downs, whether it's flexible commission structure, whatever your guys' value proposition is. Your team offers guaranteed stuff, whatever, like you all, got, you all got your own stuff. You're going to need a lot of ammunition. You're going to need grenades, machine guns, pistols, tanks, 
to differentiate yourself, but only use one at a time and don't puke all this stuff on them. And, and then use a tie down. If you get them saying yes, have the confidence to build that uh, a closing optimized paragraph and get, get the agreement. Then you can skip over this paragraph, go right into the listing questionnaire with confirming or qualifying. Or use this paragraph right here to close them, all right? It's much more of an amateur one, but it gets results. It's how we start people off with basic training with that and tell through listening and they understand the formula of that closing paragraph to be able to put um, put keywords in in certain spots to get people to take actions on their needs, wants, and desires. Questions, what's up? Is that uh... – a is that a script right there and everything? Is that in the um, the Dropbox? It should be. Okay. I just want to make sure. Um, it is, Steve. So there's even a much more complex one in there. So I had a coaching client that uh, had coached with other teams and had other stuff. And uh, and he, he added some stuff to it. And I'm like, well, this is good if you don't mind me sharing this with other clients. But I want to keep it as simple as possible, but you got to understand the psychology of how it all puts pieces together and when to use what and you don't have to use everything and how to mix and match stuff. Because as an inside salesperson or even as an agent, when I'm working as an agent, I don't try to be this expert and know it all, know it all and impress them with my knowledge and all that stuff. My primary focus and your guys, most of you guys' primary focus as ISA is on here is to set quality appointments. That's it. But we end up overvaluing ourselves and wanting to feel important and give more information than we could when we need to be able to use information to get them to take action. So in a different setting that's in a different environment is when I can display that I, I know what I'm talking about and I can – um, just display market knowledge or my own background or life experience knowledge um, or even show off some of my charisma. Um, it's just that's not the time and place over the phone. That's why if they're starting to ask me questions, I don't answer them. I'll be like, hey, that's a great question. I might give them a little bit of information like on the flexible commission plan and then I ask for an appointment. So just like on the flexible commission plan, hey, it sounds like commission was a concern to you. The good news is, is we have a flexible commission uh, structure. Um, it's going to allow you to, to, to select different plans. Um, when's a good time we can get together to go over our flexible commission structure? And then they're going to say, well, tell me about that. Why don't you give that to me? Hey, you know, I am a licensed agent or I'm not a licensed agent. I just unfortunately don't work in that capacity. Now, Greg will be able to uh, meet you at the house, sit down with you, go over all of this with you. Here, here, but here's what I can tell you. And I'm not supposed to tell you this, so don't tell them I told you this. But if we do list your home and we're marketing it and you find the buyer for it, We'll sell it for only 1%. Look after your fiduciary responsibility. Now, that's definitely fair enough to sit down with this at no obligation, right? That's fair enough. Does that make sense? Would you like to see how that could work for you? And then be like, yeah, but what's the other ones? I'm going to be like, look, I don't work in that capacity. I wasn't even supposed to tell you that. Look, can we do Can we do 5 o'clock? I got I to gotta move on to the next call, right? So I built some suspense, some curiosity, but also I gave them a little piece of what they want. Just like when everybody wants to ask us what's in our 89-point marketing plan. I'll throw Facebook out there, YouTube, different stuff. But the 89-point marketing plan is how to position your home to proactively get it sold. So in our 89-point marketing plan, it's about trimming bushes, curb appeal, um, you know, the clutter of your home, paint. Like there's a bunch of stuff in there that, that to them be like, well, no shit, like, my last agent told me a couple of these or that's common sense, but I've really separated myself from my competition because I always want to do that through compare and contrast. If you're like everybody else, you're not standing out and you're not going to be leading. And so through an 89 point marketing plan, we have 89 different ways to position your property and proactively get it sold versus the traditional three point marketing plan agent. Okay. What other questions we got? We're up against some time here, guys.
So um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is really a question or more of something that I ha personally have an issue with, mm -hmm. but like sounding aggressive or like a little more pushy because I think sometimes I'm just too nice on the phone mm -hmm. and that doesn't really get people to give me the information they want or I can't mm -hmm. get them to book an appointment because I'm too nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk about this all the time with our with our with our people, um, especially new people that come in like they think just because their pleasantries are nice and they're good and they they got the how are you's today and the thank you. That's come up like that's all cool, but people aren't going to hire you for that. Like people pe people want aggressive agents, people that are going to go negotiate for them, people that are not pushovers. And so. You have to use some negative reversing, and that's what you're going to learn in the advanced group, is to come from that authoritative spot. I want you to be the prized agent or the prized brokerage, and you're doing them a favor by calling them. Look, we turned down more listings than we're willing to pick up. Now, I am looking at your home. It's a beautiful home. So I hit them with that, that, that scarcity of I don't call everybody. I don't list every home. And then I hit them with a compliment, right? And so you want to always come from that authoritative place. Answer it. And answer an ass, acknowledge an ass is a great way to be able to do that. You can still do it being nice. That's why higher D personalities do better at expireds and withdrawals because they're disgruntled. They're pissed off their go uh, um, home hasn't sold. They're upset with their agent. They're blaming the marketing. They're blaming communication. They're blaming the industry. Okay. So it's up to us to come in there and reset the standard as a professional. And that really comes with – who asked that question? Was that Jennifer? Oh, Elise. Elise. So, Elise, as a as a high I personality, what we're going to have to work on with you with an alter ego with these is more of a tough guy, a person approach. So, Casey has a high D, just like I'm a higher D, so I'm more bulletin point. I don't I don't care a lot about details. I care about results, max not wasting time, and high I, you know, my second trait is a I personality. And so, um, and you're, a, you lead with your eye. And so you appreciate people being nice. You like to be liked. Um, you, you typically like to have the music on in the background or working well with other people. And, and, and you're going to be nice to people. And you think just because you're nice to them that they should tell you everything that you want to know. Right. And, once you understand roles and responsibility and disprofiling, profiling and Mark's going to go over that in the advanced group with you. And I know that you took a test and you kind of know what you are and have an idea of what that is. But once we can start communicating with people the way that they want to be communicated with, that's going to be powerful for you because some people you're going to have an eye on the phone and your eye is going to be natural to them. And they're going to jive with you like you. You're going to be easily go through this information. Even if they're upset and pissed off, they're going to laugh with you and have fun. But if you get like an engineer on the phone, that's like a DC or CD or something like that, they're going to be very dry. They're almost going to um, be borderline disrespectful. Um, or if you even get like an ID, like on the phone, like I, I'm not going to give you information up front. I'm going to see if you can, if you're a professional, if you can take a punch and then not just take a punch, can you give a punch back? Because Somebody that's going to get my home sold is going to have to be aggressive because the last agent couldn't do it. And they're my friend and I know they're successful and they didn't get my home sold. So they're already comparing you and judging you to whatever that last standard was. Right. And so as you learn how to let people vent and ask the right questions and handle them with confidence. And that comes through experience. It just, you know, we can give you all the psychological tools and we can work on your disc profiling, uh, matching and mirroring and stuff like that. The best thing for you as an I is to learn negative reversing. All right. And once you, and once you start to uh, implement some of that stuff, it's going to be uncomfortable for you at, uh, at first. Cause you're like, especially people we coach in Texas or the, the South, like everybody is so nice. And they're like, Oh, we can't say that. Or uh, I, have people, I, have, I, have, I have negative ghost rider. <laughs> What's that? What's that? <laughs> no, that's, that has not been my experience when I'm calling these expired. Sorry. I've been trying to unmute myself. Um, I would love to go through um, an intro on a call that I've that I've been experiencing. See how you kind of you know navigate around it. Um, here, here's what I here's what 
here's what I'll suggest, guys. Come to Call Night, too. Those are out the technology piece, and we can make calls together. Make calls together. Too. I can help you make calls. I'll make some calls in the database. I'll coach you after each call. If you can't figure out that technology, make calls right. Hey, let me mute you. Jim, let me mute, you. mute yourself. Sorry. I don't know what's wrong with my Sorry. mic. Sorry. Uh, sound like I was a robot there for a while. I'm not typically how I sound most of those, but anyways, uh, anyways uh, uh, hit mute, Jennifer, real quick. I am. All right. Okay, so it goes back to being able to record your calls. Um, I get I get this all the time, um, even with some newer clients or new ISAs. They're like, well, it's different in your market, right? And it is different in our market. And that's why what worked for us in our market uh, even with Casey with circle prospecting, Mark taught him some stuff. <clears throat> and I'm like, look, depending on call volume, competition, uh, the part of the region you're in, um, culturally, we might have to make some tweaks, but the principles to, to how we build this stuff doesn't change. And, and so, uh, we might have to make some tweaks to some of these, like, especially people, I'll use a good example, calling people on the West coast. California is totally different than calling people in uh, uh, in New York, and, and, and I agree with that. You know, the West Coast or even uh, California. Even I have buddies in Oregon and, and Washington area. It's more like friendly, cowabunga. What's up? They'll listen to you. No, I'm not interested, dude. Versus you call New York. It's like, what do you want today? Why are you calling my phone? But I I tend to think that those people are like M and M's. They're hard on the outside, but they're soft in the shell because that's just their culture, a lot of D's. But once you can penetrate that m and shell, they're soft in the inside. Then we can get to true problems. Then we can get to true motivation. What they was really trying to accomplish in the first place. We have to understand calling internet leads is easy. Calling internet leads is fun. It, with the proper data, data management, with the proper USPs, with the proper follow-up systems and the right leadership and all of that stuff, you're going to convert long term and make good money and your company will too. Fizbos, cancellations, withdrawals and expireds are tough. This takes a real professional and you guys are also calling on leads that your comp your competition could be somebody like myself. Like they're just a single agent, they're not building a team, their livelihood is tied to that one pillar. And so they're savvy as hell with being able to go in, demonstrate leadership, come from that place of authority, bang out all the questions, um, exploit those pain points, and then promise the world, right? Um, and, and so with you, Elise, with the I personality versus internet leads, it's gonna be it's gonna be totally different. But I will work with you to get a superhero built. And when you go to call them, we're going to put on your superhero alter ego hat and we're going to attack them. And I promise you that this structure can work. It's worked for hundreds of different agents and ISAs across the country. This was my first first outline that I built in um, 2015 or uh, sorry, 2010. Um, so I've tested this on hundreds of thousands of dials to tweak it, to get to this point, to get the information I'm looking for. To be able to have that optimized close with uh, simple with simple uh, psychology. However, you do have to come from a place of um, confidence. You do have to be seen as an expert. You do have to be seen as an authoritative, and you do have to be able to gain mutual uh, uh, respect to be able to have a, a chance to help them. So we'll work through that. I get told. Okay. After, hold on. Uh, Jennifer said, I get told F off. My house is off the market to call me. Hang up before seven seconds to come out of my mouth. 10th person to call me. Okay. So Jennifer with something like that. Here's so I had, I had a buddy, right? That he's in a hyper aggressive market. Right. And so with these unique, unique scenarios like this, because all the Keller Williams people teach on it. And like when we started doing this stuff five or six years ago, nobody was really doing it, but all the coaching companies are coaching on it. And so there's, there's a lot of competition. So what you have to do is change your intro to a pattern interrupt, just like we did with Casey. Like Casey was calling and had that long intro. It was like 10 seconds. It was nice. It was had pleasantries in it and blah, blah, blah. But he's like, dude, I'm not getting anywhere. And I said, get cut straight to the chase. So now we have somebody like Casey calling somebody and saying, hey, this is Casey with Select Homes. I have a big problem. 
you got their attention. Like that's our whole thing is to be able to get their attention. And what we do with it is up to us. Like, and so being able to make some modifications to your intro with expireds, I want to work with you with that. So to give you an example of what I did uh, a couple of months ago with a buddy, he's in a hyper aggressive market. He's like, Adam, he's like, um, just whatever. He's like, we're going to have to change the intro. It was working. Now we're not getting results, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and he, his ISA is like us. Uh, our ISA that calls these gets in at 10, right? So every day our competition has a two hour jump start on us, but we don't have a lot of competition here with them. We do have some. Um, and I've just been able to differentiate my message from them. However, call them and ask them, it, uh, Unmute yourself real quick, Jennifer. I want to ask you a question before I uh, let this fly. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you okay, saying? So what are you saying? What are you saying after they say? What are you saying? The tenth person to call. The tenth person to call. I I'll usually say, I know. I apologize. Um, I you know I I do understand you're probably getting a lot of phone calls, but um, we work. In your area, this is mm -hmm. this is where we farm, and we're in the neighborhood every day. And just wanted to, you know, reach yeah. out and. No, 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 no. no. Okay. We're just obviously we're, just, no. we're floundering. We're floundering. We're like somebody in the area, area. kind of like just to stop by. Oh, it's very classy. Very classy. You hear mute yourself. You know. Mute yourself. You know. Sorry, I'm gonna start calling in. Hey, sorry, sorry about that, Jennifer. So hit them, hit them with this. So when they say, "Hey, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know where I'm getting feedback from your speaker." So the tenth person that called me today, take me off of your list. So that was what my buddy was getting. You know what I, I had his ISA start saying. Would you like me to show you how to stop all of these calls? Look, I'm getting all these calls. You're the 10th person. Where'd you get my number from? Why do you keep calling me? Hey, great. I fully understand your frustration. Would you like me to stop all of the calls right now? I can stop them. Would you like me to stop them? Yeah, great. Tell me how you can do that. I'm going to relist with my agent anyways, right? Great. We're, I, I'd like to come out sit down with you, show you how we can get all the uh, calls to stop. And, and I can appreciate that, that uh, you're going to relist with your same agent. I understand that. However, real quick, how long was your home listed with them? They're interested in me being able to stop their calls because I'm going to be able to stop the calls once we get the listing back on the market. However, I got their attention when I hit them with a pattern interrupt. Hey, look, I get the I, you're, I get you're frustrated. I know you're getting all these calls. Would you like me to stop help you stop the calls today? Hit them with that pattern interrupt. We got their attention again. Great. How are you going to do that? Just make this call stop. I'm going to relist with my uh, uh, my friend, right, or my agent again. Hey, I, look, I can understand that. How long was it on the home uh, on the market with them? Real quick, real quick. You always want to throw in that real quick to keep their attention and let them know, like, I'm not here to waste your time. Real quick. I understand. Real quick. Okay? What I want to do is start to talk about the pain of why that home didn't sell, even though they tell me they're listening with their agent. I'm the 10th person that calls. Because what I talked to, to you guys about last week, I want to tie it to the definition of insanity. That's another pattern interrupt and a negative reverse that most amateurs are not going to use because they feel, oh, you can never say that to somebody. I've closed a lot of business off being able to articulate the definition of insanity. How long was your home on the market? How much traffic did you experience? Real quick, real quick. What was the feedback from your friend? Hey man, I understand. I understand you're trying to help your friend out. Are they part-time, full-time? Okay, they're part time. What's their other job, right? Okay, look, we're we're a professional marketing company first and foremost. Real estate is just a vehicle of how we make our money. Now, real quick, I appreciate you spending this time on the phone with me. Yes, I'm going to make these calls stop once you sit down and speak with us. But do you know what the definition of insanity is? They're going to be like, yeah or no. It's doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. I appreciate that you like your friend. I appreciate you're trying to help your stepmother out. However, what are you really trying to accomplish with getting your home sold? Because if you list with them again and it doesn't sell, can you afford for that to happen?
Like, why are you selling? What are you trying to accomplish? Downsizing, upsizing, moving out of the area, retired, must sell? Like, I, I, I want to be thankful and appreciative of their friend and them doing a noble cause with trying to help them out. But once again, I'm going to differentiate myself through by being a professional marketer, working full time, getting results. Yeah, we sold 89 homes uh, uh, last month, right? Look, you're the 10th person to call today. Hey, I understand your frustration. I get that. Would you like me to stop all of the calls? Would you like me to stop them? They're going to be like, yes, I'm looking to get their attention and get them to say yes. Yes. How are you going to do that? I'm going to, uh, great. Ro but before I get to that, before I get to that, how long was your home on the market for? Look, I don't, I, look, six months, but I'm relisting it with the same agent again. All right. I, I get it. What, what was the traffic that you experienced? I'm basically just trying to get some information and keep them on the phone. Jennifer, what, how I've kept your attention too with some of this stuff is I've been enthusiastic. And so I want you to, as, as you get on the phone, we tend to take real estate so, so serious. And we tend to clam up and we tend to just chatter and be very passive. Okay. And so it's okay to use attention lines. It's okay to not be aggressive, but to be assertive and understand what people are really trying to accomplish with putting their house on the home in the first place. And if you firmly believe in your service and the agents that you're setting the appointments for and yourself that you're the best option that, at helping them, then you need to be giving it 120%. And articulating your value and starting a movement and attracting business and getting them to take action. All right. And so being enthusiastic goes a long way. There was a guy named Ivan. He's still in, he's still in the advanced group. He's a monotone type of guy. And <laughs> we was really working on his tonality and spit. Uh, uh, um, Sorry, guys, don't start reading uh, speed and pitch and all this stuff. And once he started getting a little more enthusiastic, he's like, man, it's like wears me out because it's not my natural flow. Right. And it's not how I naturally operate. And I'm like, it's good. You just have jam sessions. And that's why you need that's why we work uh, three hours in the call center, off an hour, come back three hours and then they're off. And I have three different shifts doing that to stay covered and open for 12 hours. It's a way for me to get that singular focus of enthusiasm channeled through spurts of jam sessions is what I like to call it. First, just saying somebody's sitting there making some dials and it looks like they're on the phone, but we're not being that impactful. Do you guys think I carry the same energy around with me every single hour of the day of how I get on here and coach with you guys? Um, you know, I deliver pretty passionately to our team on Wednesdays and I have my moments where I have to turn it on and I have to deliver and I have to be passionate and enthusiastic and believe in, in, in what I'm doing to be able to help you guys set more appointments, do more business, or, you know, somebody like Shay, help, help her start to grow a team within a team and start seeing her for more than what she is. So she could eventually be more than what she is currently and, and persuade her to constantly improve, to become better. And she's going to start netting more money. Right. And so when I'm on, I have to be on. It's not me, just me going through my natural style. Like if it was more of my natural style, it'd be a little more of how I present, of how we're getting numbers in the beginning. Yeah, what's up? What's going on in the world today? Okay. But when we're on that phone, that call might only be 15 minutes. Give it everything you got. Ask the right questions. Build value. Come from a place of confidence. And uh, we're going to work more with negative reversing, pattern interrupts, and all these techniques that we are starting to give you on bite-sized digestible pieces. Uh, however, hopefully we are at least equipped enough to hit, hit these FISBOs next week. Any other questions? Jennifer said, okay, I'll try that. 
Scott, you back? Elise, Casey, Melanie, anybody? Shay? No questions at the time. Good stuff today, guys. Adam. What's up? Check your messenger. Oh, yeah. Why is that? You'll see. <laughs> All right. There's going to be pictures of your accident? Yeah. Oh, shoot. He's going to pull it up right here. I want to see him, too. <laughs> yeah, pull him up. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, man. Shit. Damn, did you have your seatbelt on? I did, but it snapped. I wound up bouncing around in the back seat. Wow. All that right there on my face is all I pretty much got. I mean, I, I got, I'm really sore, and, you know, I got a headache that from hell that won't go away, but other than that, I'm good to go. You care if I, you know, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about storytelling, man. Uh, as sales people. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I sent it to you and Barbara. So you think, so are you, you're part of the inside sales group. Can I put this in here? Kind of highlight. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Appreciate it. God, man, you got really. Yeah, like the, the next the next day, like I remember I was talking to, I think it was Tuesday. I was talking to some of the guys in my, that in my office and they're like, why the hell are you working? I was like, why wouldn't I be working? I got to make extra money now. <laughs> Cool. I, I got to get a new car and I got to get, you know, I got to pay for more stuff now. So Motivated. why wouldn't I be at work? Motivated. You're blessed and motivated all in the same thing. Shay said God is good. And oh, yeah. He has great things for you in 2017. That's, uh, oh, yeah, definitely. that's, that's, uh, Casey. Yeah. From Oregon. Oregon. Yep. Cool. So Shay, it's a little slow. You hopped on, uh, Hopped on with me today. You've probably never heard that with the expired stuff. I don't get into too much of that stuff with you guys. Good stuff, though. More of the same. Good stuff. You know, I would, I would just say for the new agents or the new, you know, new ISAs or anybody that's new with us is, and with, you know, you working with them, is just continue to always think outside the box. Um, even at night when you may not be. You know, you may be with family or you see a, you know, or you're playing on Facebook and you see a post. Don't be afraid to jump out and send a, a private message or send a message and just say, hey, you know, if you ever need anything, we're here. Um, I did that last night. Uh, I sent out 26 private messages off of a out-of-state credit guy who um, had uh, put a post on one of our Wichita pages. Uh, not like our Select Thomas page, but a Wichita page. And I sent out 26 private messages to say, you know, I'm a local realtor. I work with the local uh, mortgage lender. And if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. From that, I've had, since um, about 8 o'clock last night, I've had eight answer back to me and two appointments set. You know, so it's just been our way of thinking outside the box. Be in there when people least expect it. Love it. Good stuff. Great stuff. Um, yeah, Shay has uh, been generating appointments off of uh, social media and stuff like that. I've been pushing social media big with our group this last year. Um, you know, as, as you guys uh, build out your call center and stuff like that. Your social game has to be tight and congruent with uh, your online, offline message and all that stuff. So any other questions or thoughts? Scott said uh, landing soon. See everybody at call night. He, he got he synced off. He must have been flying listening to us. <laughs> oh, any other, any other stuff, guys? We're pushing time. All right. We'll catch you guys a call night. You guys have a safe and uh, happy New Year's with your family, friends, and loved ones. I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you guys a call night. Just do it. Everybody should wear their seat belts. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Casey. Everywhere you go. Bye.